Hello everyone and welcome back to IMO Reviews. That's right, it's finally here. I stayed up till 3am last night finishing off the last few missions on this game so that today I can give you a spoiler free review of Dad of War. I mean Dad of Boy. I mean God of War. Ragnarok. This game picks up almost immediately where the last one left off, now detailing the upcoming events of Ragnarok and where Kratos and Atreus fit into these prophecies. Now the obvious compliment to give this game is that it is absolutely stunning. The graphics on the small details are so good. You can see pores of skin. You can see a single hair of a beard. It's so impressive how far we've come from the PS1 and PS2 days of those God of War games, where biceps were kind of triangles. It's beautiful, it's vivid, and it's such a stunningly beautiful imagining of Norse mythology. It makes it way more tangible. You read Norse mythology and it can often throw a curveball at you. You're following it and you're understanding the characters and their relationships to each other. And then out of nowhere, a giant woman gives birth to a enormous snake and you don't really know what to make of that. Whereas in this game, you can actually see and understand how those events came to be. And I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed giving it some visual representation to what you've read. I thought the combat was really unique. If you aren't used to these buttons being the button of attack, it might take you a minute to get used to the controls. But the more you unlock, the more you experiment, and more moves you discover and get used to, suddenly it becomes part of your everyday arsenal as you, the player, grows into the skin of being the god of war. Some kills will make you feel like a badass. There was nothing more amusing to me than ripping one of those werewolves' jaws open and then turning around to see his buddy standing there like, Gulp? Yeah, buddy. And guess who's next? I love the variation that they've added to the customization of characters that really do have a genuine effect on how you play the game. If you have really weak armor, you might want to set your runic spells and your amulets to high defense so that you can not worry so much about the fact that your armor's crap. Or if you're noticing that as you get deeper into the game, these enemies are starting to get a lot harder, you're gonna need some help. Put some power runes on, maybe put some powy amulets on too. Change the pommel of your chaos blades into something that's going to give them burn damage. Maybe this area's full of those whites, I think they were called, where they move way too quick, so maybe you wanna attach something that stuns them. I like that the game made me think about it. It never spoon fed me and told me, by the way, you might wanna do this. It let me go into it, fail, think about it, change it, try again and succeed. I also thought the characters and the voice cast were so good here. And the cast are given such juicy pieces of dialogue and fantastic writing to work with that they really do shine here. It is a very big game and yet it is still structured. And I absolutely loved that. Sometimes a huge, open, expansive map where you can travel from one corner to the other sometimes feels quite daunting, at least to me. It feels like too much and it actually starts to feel like a bit of a chore. Whereas God of War keeps you focused on that main journey, but if it ever has the opportunity to give you time to explore, it well and truly lets you know that. It feels like it still had the bungee cord around my waist. No matter how far into a cave I got, I would always be able to find my way back and get back to that story. You will find items that can improve your armor, your weaponry. You can get more XP, you can get more skill points, you can evolve as the God of War. And it never became a slog. Because this world is so interesting and exciting, you want to explore. And there's always lots of backtracking. You will find chests that are blocked off and you can't get to it and you can't figure out why and it's probably because you don't have the right tool to open it yet. And yeah, the completionist in me got annoyed by that. I wanted to go back and open that chest. I won 100% on this thing. Do I have some issues with the game? Sadly, yes. This one is very small because I don't know if this is going to be the same problem for everybody, but in the early days, personally, I did suffer a few small glitches. None of them were game-breaking, thankfully. They were all very small things that I could easily live with. But sometimes when I opened up the upgrade menu, Kratos was just literally standing like this. There was no axe there. Not so much in cutscenes, but in those in-play cutscenes, lip-syncing was just 
way off in my rendition of the game. With controls as well, locking onto characters with the R3 button, but also at the same time, if you want to activate rage, you'll have to press L3 and R3. Sometimes I found I'd press both and it would actually remove my lock on, which is not what I wanted to do. Circle is the button to climb up, but it's also the button to pick up. And if there's something to pick up near something you can climb up, that can be a right pain in the ass. But these are very tiny, tiny misstrokes on an otherwise total masterpiece. And this complaint is a 50-50. It will depend on your preference. This game is called Ragnarok, and it is about the events of Ragnarok. And if, like me, you're a fan of Norse mythology, you could find yourself just sitting around with a tick list waiting for these events to happen. Like, yep, yeah, that's happened. Now we're waiting for that. Oh, it's happened. And um, then that should be, oh, it's already happening. Yep, yeah, this is definitely Ragnarok. But the game chose to take some liberties with it. And I'm really glad that they did because it kept the story fresh and interesting. And equally, it kept me on my toes not to know entirely what to expect. Rather than just patiently waiting for said event to happen, the balance between fact and fiction made it more exciting because it made me wonder if it was going to happen. Are we going to see that happen in this game? Which built up my anticipation and my excitement to progress. So despite my small complaints, I am still going to give God of War Ragnarok a well-deserved 10 out of 10. <laughs> I haven't played many games this year, but this is easily my favourite game of the year. It's stunning, it's immersive, it's great fun, it's addictive, it's emotional, with great characters, great story. The puzzles are challenging, but equally rewarding. The world is huge and so much fun to explore and get lost in. And I promise you, once you're done with it, you'll be jumping straight back into it. I know I am. Thank you for watching this review. Please be sure to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And please do hit the comment section as well. Have you played God of War Ragnarok? What did you think about it? Please be cautious of spoilers though for anyone else who has not yet completed the game. And if you haven't had enough of this pretty little face, why don't you check out some of these suggested videos here? I promise they're worthwhile. You should check them out. Keep the IMO train chugging along the line. But if not, take care. And I look forward to seeing you on the next review.